Hey guys, it's Nathan. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to come up with a strategy for our bot based on the map analysis we did in the last two videos. If you remember, from the last two videos, we got two numbers or features which describe the map and will help us in shaping our strategy. The first number is a decimal between 0 and 1, which represents the ratio of open tiles or normal tiles on the map to void tiles on the map. The second number is a positive integer which represents the amount of threat that towers pose on the map. In general, a higher tower threat number means that it's harder to attack into the enemy's base. So based on that, let's come up with a simple strategy to use. We'll start off by making a new method. Whoops. We'll make a new method called choose strategy. So let's do this. If the tower threat is above some amount, let's say 10, then it's probably very hard to attack the enemy. So we should just play defensive. What we mean by that will be explored more later. If the tower threat's not too large, we'll look at how many void squares are on the map. So if there are a lot of void squares on the map, then the ratio will be lower. So let's say if the ratio is less than 0.85, we'll build drones. The reason we're building drones is because drones can fly. They can cross over void terrain very easily. So on a map with a lot of void squares, drones will have an advantage over soldiers, which cannot move on void squares. Otherwise, we'll just stick to our soldier strategy. Let's create a couple more variables. We'll create an integer which we'll call strategy and set it to zero. Let's say for now that 0 equals defend, 1 equals build drones, and 2 equals build soldiers. It would probably be nice to create an enum or something when you're building your own bot, but for right now we just want to get this up and working. So, so the strategy equals 0 here, strategy equals 1 here, and the strategy equals 2 here. Remember, this method is in the headquarters, but other robots will need to know about our strategy. So at the end here, we'll broadcast our strategy value, let's say on channel 100. So that takes care of that. Now we need to code each of the strategies that we've come up with. Let's start with the strategy that deals with making drones. First of all, we have to handle the case where our robot, con where our, the type of our robot controller is a drone or a helipad, which some, which uh, builds drones. It turns out that the way the barracks behaves and the way we're going to want the helipad to behave are actually identical. All the barracks does is, if the core is ready, meaning the barracks can spawn a unit, and we have enough ore, then it spawns the unit in question. So we can actually, we can actually extend the barracks class, renaming it to something like simple building. 
And this class will actually handle a lot of different types of buildings, if we do it right. So first of all, let's change this value 200 that we have left over from a simple version of our bot. Let's change it to... Oh, I don't know. This will actually... I wanted to change it to the OR cost of the unit, but that depends on which unit we're spawning. So we'll leave it blank for now. So we can create a switch statement based on the type of this building. If it's a barracks, we'll spawn a soldier. So now we can put on, put in the ore cost for the unit that we want to spawn. Instead of getting the spawn direction of a soldier, we'll get the spawn direction of the unit we want to spawn. And instead of spawning a soldier, we'll spawn to spawn. This is important because spawning drones can actually be done on top of void squares, whereas spawning soldiers cannot. That takes care of that. We can actually do a very similar thing with the soldier class. We'll rename it to simple fighter. It turns out that all our soldier class does is, if there's an enemy in range, attack it. Otherwise, go to a rally point. And for right now, this type of behavior can be used by not only our soldier, but our drone and our tank as well. That means we can change this if statement up here to make it so that barracks, helipads, and tank factories all behave the same way. This is a s oh. Similarly, soldiers, drones, and tanks should all behave in the same way. Robot type dot drone. Great. So now tanks and drones have their AI as well. What else do we need to do? If we're not sure, we can just run it and see what kinds of errors it gives us. Oh, I see. Switch actually doesn't work with robot type. So I'll just change these diff statements. running it again. <clears throat> this error tells us that we have to warn that we may throw a game action exception in our choose strategy method. But maybe this will work. Okay, so on this map, our workers are still building barracks, which are then building soldiers. <clears throat> so we've forgotten to tell our beavers to build based on the strategy that we're using. We
We can do this by reading in the broadcast at channel 100. We'll build a helipad if we need to build drones. Now, if we're defending, we can only build the tank factory if we already have a barracks. So, if the strategy is zero, which means we're defending, then we'll build a barracks only if we don't already have one. So, we can use rc.check dependency process oh progress sorry this this means we already have a barracks so if we already have one then we're allowed to build tank factories and that's what we should be doing now we'll build the building represented by two build instead of just a barracks every time Let's run it again. On this map, I happen to know that our, our bot should be choosing to build drones, which is exactly what it's doing. Let's skip forward a little bit. See, the drones can move much more fluidly over the tricky void terrain in our opponent's side of the map. And again, the AI isn't that great, but it's, it's very helpful for dealing with the tough terrain. All the same. Let's go back to our code for a second. I'm just going to tweak a couple of these values to make things a little cleaner. I'm going to make it so that beavers will build if there's at least 300 ore instead of 500 ore. And I'm going to make it so that everything attacks on turn 1000 instead of turn 600. I've also made one more map, which is called abyss.xml. This is a very, very tight map. And if our bot behaves correctly, it should start to build tanks. However, we can see that it's still building soldiers, which we don't want it to do. This is also a fairly quick fix. This bit of code just tells the building to only build if the like if if we are defending then the building should only build something if it's a tank factory. We'll run it again to make sure it works. And as you can see, there are no soldiers being built from this barracks, which is good. We do however have tanks coming out. These tanks aren't exactly doing a great job of defending, but that's more due to how the map works. If the tanks were defending the tower better, like if they were clustered around here or something, then it would be very, very hard for our opponent to break us, and we could probably pull out a victory using tiebreakers or something. <clears throat> anyway, that's an introduction to the different types of strategies based on how the map looks and how the map could play out. I hope this is helpful, and I hope that you guys can come up with your own strategies and your own ways for analyzing the map and using it to your advantage. See you guys next time.